the majority of the digestion and almost all absorption in the human body takes place in a digestive organ known as the small intestine. Now, the small intestine is shown on the board and we can break down the small intestine into three sections. The beginning portion is where the digestion actually takes place. This is known as our duodenum. So within our duodenum, we basically have the breakdown of the macromolecules into our amino acids, the fatty acids, and into our uh, monosaccharides. Now in the middle portion known as our jejunum and our end portion known as the ileum, this is where we absorb those nutrients. So the intestinal cells of the jejunum and our ileum known as enterocytes basically absorb those individual nutrients into the cells and then transport those nutrients into the blood system and our lymph system as we'll see in just a moment. So let's describe what the actual structure is inside the small intestine and let's take a cross section of the small intestine. We basically get the following diagram. Now the outer portion shown in red is the thick and the thin layer of smooth muscle which is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And this smooth muscle basically contracts in a uh, wave-like fashion and that creates the process of peristalsis which basically moves our kind of food along our small intestine. Now the region right below the smooth muscle layer is the epithelial layer and attached to our epithelial layer we basically have many of these projections which are known as villi and inside this cavity this is the lumen of our small intestine. This is where the food, the chyme, actually travels along. Now, if we zoom in on a single villus, we basically get the following microscopic structure. So notice along the border of our villus, we basically have many, many of these intestinal cells we call enterocytes. And each one of these enterocytes contains tiny hair-like projections known as microvilli. So the villi and the microvilli, what the purpose of these structures are, is to basically greatly increase the surface area of the small intestine and that basically means the proteolytic enzymes have more room to actually break down those macromolecules. Now, once we break down the macromolecules, they are absorbed by these enterocytes and then they move into either the blood system shown in red or the lymph system shown in orange. So this single orange vessel is known as the lacteal. It connects to the lymph system. So fatty acids are absorbed into these enterocytes and then are transported into the lacteal, the lymph system, while amino acids and monosaccharides are absorbed and transported into our blood system. Now, this entire hair-like projection border is known as our brush border. And as we'll see in just a moment at the brush border, we have digestion and absorption taking place. So as we mentioned earlier, inside our duodenum, we basically have our digestion taking place. So the cells inside this region are capable of producing our proteolytic enzymes that break down our polysaccharides, the polypeptides, as well as lipids. On top of that, the brush border found in the duodenum also contains proteolytic enzymes that are attached onto the membrane of the enterocytes. So when those macromolecules approach these microvilli of enterocytes, those, that membrane of these enterocytes contains these proteolytic enzymes that can break down the macromolecules into smaller units. Now, in addition, we have specialized types of exocrine organs, exocrine glands in the human body, and one is our pancreas. So the pancreas basically produces its own proteolytic enzymes and it mixes those proteolytic enzymes in a solution that is basic. It consists of bicarbonate. And the reason it's basic is because 
all the enzymes found in the small intestine only function at a pH that is basic, at a pH that is equal to about 8.5. So the pancreas produces proteolytic enzymes that are mixed in a basic solution composed of bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is basically what makes it basic, what gives it a pH of about 8.5. Now, this mixture of bicarbonate and proteolytic enzymes is known as the pancreatic juice. And the pancreatic juice is secreted into our small intestine as soon as the chyme actually travels into our duodenum of the small intestine. Now, another type of organ that basically helps us digest things is the liver. The liver produces a special type of mixture, fluid, known as bile. And bile is basically a mixture of water, of fats, such as cholesterol, as well as bile salts. And what bile does is it basically emulsifies our lipids in the small intestine. It mechanically digests, it breaks down our lipids lipids into smaller pieces, it increases the surface area and it allows our lipase, the enzyme that breaks down lipids, to actually break down the fats inside the small intestine. So this bile is stored in a structure known as the gallbladder and is released through a duct as soon as chyme makes its way into our small intestine. So once again, the liver produces bile and stores it in the gallbladder. When chyme enters the small intestine, the bile is dumped into the lumen of the small intestine into this section here. And what that bile does is it basically emulsifies, it mechanically breaks down our lipids into smaller pieces so that our lipase, the proteolytic enzyme, can actually chemically digest and cleave those ester bonds inside the lipids. This process is known as emulsification. So without bile, we would have a lot of trouble actually breaking down our lipids. And once again, all the enzymes that function in the small intestine function at a pH of about 8.5. And what gives it a pH of 8.5, what makes it a basic solution inside the lumen of the small intestine is the bicarbonate that exists in the pancreatic juice. Now, before we go on to absorption, one thing that I forgot to mention inside the small intestine is these specialized types of cells known as goblet cells. So just like in the stomach we have mucus cells that secrete mucus inside the small intestine, we also have these cells known as goblet cells that secrete mucus and the mucus basically protects the epithelial layer from being damaged by the environment found inside our small intestine. Now finally, let's briefly discuss the process of absorption. So inside the jejunum and the ileum, we have those nutrients that have been broken down are now absorbed by the enterocytes of our villi found on the border of the small intestine, on the intersection of the small intestine. Now, we basically have those lipids, the triglycerides are broken down into fatty acids and these fatty acids can easily pass across the membrane of enterocytes because the fatty acids are lipid soluble and then those fatty acids enter the lacteal and are transported into our lymph system and eventually they make their way into our blood system. However, the amino acids and our sugars, our monosaccharides such as glucose, are transported into the cells either via passive or active transport. That means we have to use specialized types of integral proteins to actually transport the amino acids and our glucose, our monosaccharides. And then those monosaccharides and amino acids are transported directly into the blood system via these red vessels as shown. So fatty acids enter the lymph system and then enter the blood system, but 
the amino acids and our monosaccharides into the blood system directly via these blood vessels as shown. And in the next lecture, we're going to focus on the specific types of proteolytic enzymes that are produced by the small intestine as well as by the pancreas.